okay guys so welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are going to start with exchange 2019 so in this video i will discuss what all the new things added in exchange 2019 what are the features discontinued from 13 or as well as from the exchange 2019 i will show you the step-by-step -step fresh deployment of windows 29 uh, sorry exchange 2019 and uh, Apart from that, mailbox, DL creations, administrative task things, a couple of basic administrative activities. I will create uh, another video, 2013 or 2016 to 2019 migration. But uh, before that, in this video, we will show the fresh deployment and what are the prerequisites, how you can proceed to deploy Exchange 2019, these stuff. So let's start with this. So first, what are the architecture or what is the architecture of uh, 2019 exchange server? So here you can see the all roles are merged. Like earlier, if we, if we worked on exchange 2010, we have five roles. Then we have two roles and or you can say uh, three roles in exchange 2013 where the CAS, mailbox and edge server role were there then for later on we have a mailbox and everything is merged the same architecture is followed in 2019 also here what we have all the roles are consolidated and known uh, as mailbox server and we have an independent as transport role that would exist in a perimeter network in the upcoming videos i will show you how we can deploy the edge and how it will works Today we will work on exchange mailbox server role, the deployment of mailbox server role. So we will see how it go. So the mailbox server is mainly hosting at front end as as, as back end like is to holding the client access uh, functionality as well as your mailbox databases functionality. In Exchange 2016, we have seen then our all client requests accept unified messaging as proxies to backend mailbox server and in 2019 we have still removed the 20 unified messaging rule this is the major difference from 16 if we talk about it it won't require independent things a lot of because uh, as uh, we know that the voicemail and um integration it would comes as a part of uh, exchange and skype for business integration section so we will cover that part also but here it's the uh, role is removed functionality is still available so no worried about the voicemail architecture in exchange 16. here this is the architectural role view structure of exchange 2019 first i'm just covering up a couple of theoretical section and so I can just explain what we are going to do, how we will work to do that. And later on, I will uh, show you the lab work, how we can deploy Exchange 2019 step-by-step -step structure. Here you can see it uh, might be you heard some background voice. Uh, there's some construction work is going on outside. So no issue. Let's continue with the same. So architecture of Exchange Server role. Here you can see the Edge Transport role has been deployed in your perimeter network zone. And behind the firewall, we have mailbox servers. Those are connected with your storage and Active Directory. So this is the DAG structure. I will discuss the DAG structure also in upcoming videos. So as per the recommendation you must place a load balancer to it will maintain the high availability for the client access internal clients and would be connected directly to load balancer and the external request would be coming like mobile web and outtake requests and same as the second part that is smtp that coming through your edge transport as we always know that exchange is published in two aspects the one is first one is your smtp where you are sending and receiving emails from other servers over internet and the second part is the publishing of your mobiles or web or outlook clients like the clients those trying to access their mailboxes which are hosted in your exchange environment 
so these two public publishings are there as point of architectural view or you can say a published structure of your exchange on-premises environment so this will the first uh, transport section it's just to sending other email gateways over internet and this one is for the mobile access of your or you can say external access of your in user mailboxes so if you are talking about as compared to exchange 2016 administrator if you worked as an exchange 2016 administrator what new things you will be getting here so most of the things are important changes but still like the hardware supports windows core support meta cache dynamic database improved search first and reliable failovers client access uh, rules are more added calendar improvement delegates permissions and the email address internationalization that means you will get an, a standard structure format for your uh, emails like uh, you may add uh, non-english characters in your email addresses this is the benefit email address internationalization is the concept where you can add a non english base mostly you have seen the english based email addresses but now you have an option in your regional language uh, email addresses can be added so not all the language supported but yes couple of there okay now the important changes if you are talking about 2013 so in 2013 we obviously have an client access role as a separate server role which is not there in 2016 as well as in 2019 client uh, traffic proxying is from is still available 13 to 19 if we talk about like if you have a 2013 integrated environment Updated and optimize your Outlook and web interface. Mappy over HTTP is the default protocol. It's still continued. And uh, Outlook on the web users can link and share documents through OneDrive or business. If you have an integrated SharePoint or OneDrive environment. And Office Online Server. If it is in integrated, you can also edit your Word, Excel and PowerPoint documents within your email. Still, if you don't have a client install like ms office you don't have installed on your machine if we talk about distal comparison some hybrid configuration wizard and active syncs new templates for ds dlp policies in place discovery and uh, re redesigned search infrastructure is also available in 2019 okay Apart from adding, we can also see some of the features uh, de-emphasized or you can say discontinued. Uh, the features which are from 2016, if we talk about it's UM, Unified Messaging, as a role was there, but it has been discontinued. And same as for 2016, if we could talk about Client Access Server. So be, these roles basically the discontinued, but can be a form of merge in the current server, like the CAS Access. It's merged as a form of service. The functionality is still available, but yes, the independent role is removed. De emphasized features are like RPC over HTTP. Yes, it's uh, not much recommended now. And DAC support for the failure clustering and administrative access points, availability group, and non Microsoft replication APIs. So, Microsoft is de emphasizing these features in 2019. Still, it's available, but not on the focused base. Okay, so when we are going to deploy an Exchange 2019 or any of the Exchange servers since beginning, so there's a couple of switches and the parameters you have to run. Exchange is closely integrated with your Active Directory. It will work parallelly. All the Exchange configuration and the information is stored with your Active Directory. Please just to add clarity here, Exchange Mailboxes database or Mailbox Mails data is always stored in Exchange Mailbox server role with Exchange Mailbox databases. But the configuration information it could be related to Mailbox, Mailbox servers, objects, everything always stored in your Active Directory. So when the Active Directory, I think I have already discussed in one of my video in related to Windows Server. You can view it in the same channel. So 
uh, in this uh, that I discussed about the Active Directory schema. Schema is basically an object structure, attributes, prototype, or you can say a structure format. So what it will do when you are going to deploy an exchange, first we have to prepare our Active Directory environment for the exchange server. So when we are preparing an Active Directory environment, what it will do, it will expand the schema, like add the exchange related attributes with your schema or a prototype of object. So when you are creating a new user or any object, a new computer or anything when you are going to create, it will automatically inherit those exchange specific attributes. So when you are going to deploy an exchange environment, first you have to prepare a schema or prepare AD as per organization name and prepare domain. So these are the switches you can run it. If you run the prepare AD, it will work. Uh, do and prepare the current domain as well as your entire uh, forest structure or you can say organization structure. Either if you have an independent one, you can simply run the schema or specific to domain if you want to run, you can use the prepare domain structure. So the thing is that if you are not running this, at the time of exchange installation, it will ask and show a warning message. You haven't run that and it will try to run it from there. As a recommended approach, because you are going to deploy an exchange not on your domain controller. Obviously, it should be as an independent server. So when you are going to deploy the exchange in, at your independent server, so it would be as a remote server. And from there, it's not recommended to or run prepare schema or prepare ready commands because at the time if the command get failed or the replication of your domain uh, get failed because you are running it remotely so that may cause some issues in your active directory it won't be happen always but if in case that could be happen then it's not recommended to run active directory schema from the remote path you always it's recommended you must run it through uh, your local server or local domain at, at your local domain controller so this is what about the basic uh, structure before going to deploy when your exchange and some deployment options you can use exchange versions there were two exchange 2019 versions are available one is the standard another one is enterprise enterprise uh, if you have enterprise server license you can hold up to 100 mailbox databases it's not about the mailboxes it's about the mailbox databases where the user mailboxes resides and in the standard edition you can use up to five mailbox databases by default when you deploy a server it creates a new mailbox database a single one Further to that, once you add the licensing information, server will act as per requirement. By default, it will take up to five. Just and as standard one, if you are not adding enterprise license. Now, the second licensing section, reservoir version, and the licensing section, if you are talking about the client access license, the CAL license. So it's also categorized in the standard and enterprise. They have their own couple of differences like in the standard you wouldn't get uh, in place old uh, detailed feature some e-discovery features there could be a com some limitations we may discuss these differences in detail in upcoming videos so this is the difference between standard and uh, enterprise client access license might be some voicemails etc you will also not get in a standard couple of things that you will be getting in enterprise type of licensing when we are going to deploy an exchange environment, it could be a single server deployment model, multiple server deployment model, or could be as a hybrid deployment model. Single server, we are going to deploy an independent single environment with a single server at your small business environment. Multiple server deployment, you have a high availability and disaster recovery features with uh, your exchange deployment. And the last one is the hybrid deployment. In the hybrid deployment, you have an option where you can integrate with your Office 365. So a couple of mailbox exist at your on-premises, at your local physical server or a virtual server. Or a couple of mailboxes can be exist over an Office 365. 
main flow and other things you can define as per your requirement it could be from through on premises entire could be through office 365 so these are the detailed things we may discuss when we go work on hybrid deployment and the hybrid structure so this is all about the base of introduction related to exchange server and now we are going to deploy an exchange I will show you how we can proceed step by step deployment of uh, exchange 2019 so what I have done I have just uh, installed one of the server it's a Windows 2019 server box which is a member of my domain it's added here so there's a couple of prerequisites that you have to deploy it at your server before you are going to proceed it so I have uh, what I will do I will uh, share the details in one of the file and share the same file over the, my description link you can see one of the description link in my this video from there you can download the file for prerequisites file for exchange 2019 at windows 2019 server so i will share it the same along with so first thing you have to deploy it uh, when you have windows 2019 you have to deploy the dotnet framework 4.8 so i'm just going to install it uh, right away okay that uh, would take a couple of minutes in the meantime i am also installing another prerequisite that is uh, Visual Studio Runtime, Visual C++, Runtime, Redistributable. So I'm just installing it right now. So these three software uh, you need to install. The first is uh, .NET Framework 4.8, Microsoft Visual C++ 2013, and the third one is UCMA Runtime. take a couple of minutes so once it's uh, I just started the installation so just wait for a minute once it's back we will continue so now the installation of uh, .NET framework is completed so just clicking on finish on this it will ask to restart let me wait for a minute then I will restart it before that I can just uh, deploy the UCMA runtime. So these three things you have to deploy UCMA runtime and then Visual C++ and the last is Visual Studio sorry uh, .NET Framework which I deployed. So now I'm installing UCMA runtime. I will share all the links with you and all the prerequisite step in a single file. I will put it and my shared link so from there you can download a simple text file and you will get all these information from where you can download UCMA and .NET framework as well as Visual C++ so it will again take a couple of minutes and uh, in installation so let just wait it for a minute and we can see once this deployment is completed okay so I'm just going to start Windows PowerShell. Some other prerequisites also. Okay, now this has been finished. At Windows PowerShell, uh, you have to add uh, features. So add install Windows features and feature name is ADTS RSAT. So RSAT. ADDS you have to first install it this one and then I will also show you these are the base all the feature lists that you have to install from Windows so I have taken it a PowerShell command uh, for this I will share the same in this uh, my link at uh, the file which you will get this step by step in a text file 
I will show you what all are the features that require to install. So first I'm installing it uh, Windows feature ADDS are set and once it's get completed I will add couple of more uh, features Windows features so let's just wait for a minute and once it gets completed I will show you what else we can do or what else we have to install it just waiting for this to be completed you may have a couple of background noise uh, it's some construction work is going on okay so now it's going me showing me the other features the list which I just copied from text file so it's asking me to install it and then we will restart in a finally go so just adding these features once it's get finish I can let I will let you know it take a couple of minutes because a lot of Windows features you may install these features one by one uh, through graphic interface but it would be more complex it's an easy if you're installing it in a one go I will uh, share this in a text file so you can simply copy these uh, information from text file and paste it here anywhere into your server and then you will get deployment structure just waiting it to finish it up now it's done you can see the installation is completed and it's asking to reboot my server so let's go back on my restart section and restart it even you can restart it from normal windows so it will take a few minutes and restart of your machine it will update the windows settings and then it will take around two to three minutes it would be totally depends on your server speed and server performance so once server will be back then we will continue just stay with us so i'm just waiting to get it complete okay so now my server is back after deploying and updates and everything so it's ready to go for exchange installation so these are the prerequisites you may go refer my link video uh, file which in the same video so from there you can get the details of these prerequisites uh, I have I think already added okay I've added my exchange 2019 DVD or ISO you can say okay so now that's fine I'm just going to start okay this is not a recommended way the first step I missed is here that is uh, installation of uh, schema or you can say extend schema prepare option so I um, will go in the same uh, setup structure itself only but as a recommended way you must log into your domain controller and run the prepare ad setup slash prepare ad command with exchange uh, dvd or with the help of exchange iso and most of the time in the organizations the active directory administrators or a active directory schema admins does uh, permission is uh, limited to a specific people so they may run a command prepare ad and further to that as an exchange administrator you will go and uh, deploy the exchange here it's asking to connect for update you may connect it or i don't want to go for connect because as a production server you won't be getting internet connected with the servers so just uh, do not check the update right now click on next so it will copy the in initial installation files at your exchange so once the setup file get copied then you will be able to uh, install exchange 
uh, will take minutes, few minutes, not more than one or two minutes. So you can log in on your domain controller and add the exchange CD, run command setup slash prepare AD to prepare your AD environment and extend your schema which we have not done that so we will be getting a warning message when we are going to install exchange and it will ask and it will execute remotely from this server schema extend as well as prepare ad or prepare domain structure it will take a few more minutes so just waiting to get it complete once it will be files deployment will be completed, then we will get next continue option to deploy the same. Now the files are copied and system is initializing setup to continue. I'm just waiting when it's get ready. It's taking up the basic resources. Okay now, so once it's completed uh, initialization, you will get an introductory box where you will get this information about the exchange and it will ask to continue so i will next it will show you again the licensing agreement it's as similar as for all the softwares you have to accept it next uh, it will take a recommended setting as per microsoft standard procedure but uh, you must take an option do not use the recommended settings that option gives you a customized option settings here you can see there are two options one is the mailbox role another one is transport role edge transport role so nothing else would be available here you can deploy simple management tools also if you just want to manage exchange it could be as a jump box or a server just can be used for operational activities and should not hold the any exchange services so i am deploying it a mailbox role in that scenario the management tools are already integrated you cannot clip uh, edge and mailbox role together obviously edge would be as a perimeter network role and as an independent one apart from that you will also have an option automatically install the windows rules and features that require to install exchange you may choose this option if you are not sure about the prerequisites and not sure about what uh, should we need to add it here but uh, i've already done that the prerequisite so i'm not selecting this option here you may choose it if you are not sure about the prerequisites okay so i'm just adding but do want i just wanted to mention here one thing it would install only windows roles and features it would not install your dotnet framework would not uh, 4.8 like the version which i have externally downloaded it would not install ucma runtime the which i have already added as an independent external one and same as it will also not install visual c plus plus 2013 so that part you have, must have to take care by yourself as a external identity or external uh, component you need to deploy it so just click on this and click on next this will show you the path if you want to put the change the path to e drive d drive or anywhere you can choose the path as per your requirement just click on browse and from here you can select the appropriate location i'm taking it as a default one now the next one is ask the exchange organization name so exchange organization is just like as a forest or just like as in your external boundary limit for your exchange so whenever you are integrating two exchange different environments the organization will this name will work or this name will comes in picture and that represents your exchange environment identity here one of the option is the active directory split permission security model 
I will discuss this in upcoming video in details and just as a brief introductory information Active Directory split permissions where the Active Directory related activities performed by Active Directory AD admin and exchange specific activities would be performed by exchange administrator so exchange administrator would not have an access to perform AD related activities and vice versa I will discuss this in detail when we go in the upcoming videos so I will take it as unchecked I uh, leave it as unchecked that is the recommended one we, until required you should not split the permissions then disable the malware scanning yes I'm going to disable it it's asking about no but internet is required to latest antivirus updates and internet is not available in most of the production environment server so keep it as it is disabled and you have an other options to scan malwares like antivirus or some software that are recommended to deploy with your exchange okay uh, now once i click on next it will check the readiness checks so that will do a pre-analysis for your prerequisites just to ensure that you are ready to go for installation and as i told you earlier we will get two warnings one is because we have not run the setup slash prepare ready but these are the warnings if i am just clicking on install it will automatically run the command but this command would be run from this local machine or uh, this machine that is a member server it's not a domain controller so the first part might be i don't have as an exchange admin i don't have an access to run this uh, command because AD schema admin rights required or enterprise admin rights required to update the schema if I have an right still it's not recommended to run the command from remote machine still I'm going to run it from here but as a recommended process you must log into your domain controller and from there attach the CD or DVD of exchange and run setup slash prepare ready this is the command you have to execute it at your DVD drive with your domain controller so now I'm, it's just also saying warning 16 and 30 not exist so i'm just going to go ahead and click on install so now it's preparing my organization there are the 14 steps would be displayed here one by one and it will take around 30 minutes to 40 minutes or might be an hour it would be totally depends on your infrastructure your speed of your server server performance so let's wait for some time once it's completed then we will continue to work on exchange and see how it's going once you deploy the first exchange or any of the additional exchange server you make sure that you should take a reboot of your server so let's it's finish then we will take a reboot and see that how it will go okay so now we can see that finally it's uh, completed and you will see the setup has been completed successfully congratulations you will get this message it's a couple of post deployment activities are mentioned here you can click it and you can see the post installation task so i'm just going to take a reboot of your server so once this server will get rebooted after clicking on finish so that will be uh, that will happen all the services are up and running and everything so let's take a quick reboot on this server as a standard recommendation then we will start with exchange environment so this is my plant okay so just taking a reboot of this machine let me wait okay So now my server is back from reboot and take a, I'm going to log in on this. Once you deploy the server, make sure you must validate uh, services are up and running fine or not. So this is my first activity that I'm going to do it once my server is ready. I deployed the management tools along with 
deployment and it's in default processing it so let's take a quick look oh, it's back it totally depends on your server performance so how much time it will take uh, to back after deployment so as a first part, I'm just waiting once the server manager get updated or you can say it's get slowed. Then I will check the services. It's a little bit slow, obviously. It's the server load is heavy and I placed less memory and everything. So Okay, so I'm just going on my services to validate all exchange services are up and running fine or not yet. As a standard process, it must be running. In the meantime, you can also see uh, Exchange Management is installed here. Okay, Exchange Admin Center and Exchange Management Shell. So I just click on that and Exchange Toolbox. So all these three, because I have installed that management tools. Let me quickly have a look on Exchange Services. So, okay, Microsoft Exchange Services are running, and that must be it's in delay start. Diagnostic service not in challenge. IMF4 is still by default as in manual mode, same as for the POP3. Backward compatibility support is there for POP3 and IMF4, but default it's in disable state. So you can see it here, the Active Directory Topology Service, the Core 1, Tag Management, Front End Transport, Information Store. So all these are running and these are the key role players, RPC Client Access. All services are up and running fine. Even you can sort it out uh, with startup type. So you will come to know. Okay, all the automatic services must be in running state. Here you can see that transport is not running. Okay, it's in running state. It might take some time to refresh because I'm not getting any start option. Okay, so it's good, good to go. And my environment is pre check done. In the meantime, I started Exchange Shell and I'm going to start Exchange Admin Center. Okay, so obviously it's the site is not secure because I have not given a certificate to that. So that's why it's giving me an error warning message. But still I will continue on this. Okay, now Exchange Admin Center is ready. You can see the certificate error. I will let you know how to change or how to remove the certificate error. In upcoming videos in the meantime I just go ahead and log in with my account so we can just have a look on okay I think I must increase the memory for this server so it will get process quickly it's taking a little bit time as only 4 gigs of RAM is allocated with this machine it's taking time for the sign in just because So it's loading my mailboxes information and the console you can see the version 15 is loaded it's about to come still 
okay okay now in the mailboxes uh, what i'm going to do it uh, this is the your introduction or you can say action admin box center from here you can if you have an hybrid environment you can integrate it office 365 from here and you can directly administer your office 365 from here these are the permission compliance organization servers so all details are there you can see the server information from here uh, currently i deployed a uh, single server at this moment along you can see the mailbox role with ex1 it's installed and till now i have not entered the product key so it's just as an standard trial edition once i enter the product key it will be it will become uh, enterprise or standard whatever as per the licensing so i'm just quickly going to hit going here and i can show you one more thing the by default database uh, so the default database is always created when you deploy the first exchange server so here you can see the database and that active with the one copy with one server at ex1 so this is the database and the default database name is there so i'm going back on my recipient section i'm going to show you user mailbox creation just click on this and here you have to type the name so i'm going to take a existing user here and then i will create a mailbox with a new user so first i am going to take an existing user and existing user i taken as okay ex user 1 i am taking it it's exist in your broad cells and users so i am take have taken this i'm putting the same as uh, alias alias is the email id that used in exchange so here ex user 1 i have taken it nothing i need to assign it like the base information is remain same you have and more options so if you like to change the mailbox database you can change it from here but obviously i have only one database at this moment so i can't change it i will show you how we can change others so now you can see i have created one user account if you have an active directory split permissions enable that we discussed at the time of installation then you can use the existing users only to create a uh, user mailboxes you cannot use uh, new user accounts or uh, you cannot create new user accounts from this console but we have not enabled the active directory integrated accounts so we, uh, so active directory uh, split permissions we have not in implemented the same so we will get option to create uh, user mailboxes along with user account I will show you quickly once it is get finish. Uh, I will show you how we can create it. It's taking a little bit time. Okay, now it's done. So I'm going to create one more user account, and this one is I'm creating as ex user 2 and with the new user account so you can see all the properties are getting available here and last name first name display name logon name and their password so in most of the organization this part is uh, can need to be done at ad, ad level the user account creation and then mailbox part has been taken care by exchange team i'm going to put this in a different organization unit instead of default user one so i have uh, just selected the organizational unit box and i'm going to put it in the prod sales and users i'm going to put user account over there okay now just saving it so this user account will also be created after that i am going to create one dl that is distribution list or a group so i'm creating it from here and will add both users in the same dl in the end 
I will send and test email to show you okay I'm creating a distribution group here I will explain all these type of distribution group what all those sales all okay this is the display name and same as the alias I have added here we can put it wherever I want I'm just going to put it in sales group sorry I'm just going to put it in the sales groups okay and owner is the administrator is fine I'm going to add members here so adding members ex1 and ex2 users okay it's so simple you can it's open anyone can join it or closed administrator must, must authorize to join this group and there's a couple of restrictions so I'm just placing the question so no one can leave or add it I'm just going to save it as a distribution group I will tell you what are the detailings related to the same once you click on the user account you can see the couple of other options like you can disable the active sync like mobile access o access whatever things you can enable and disable it from here more details are also available once you click on the users and then edit option I will explain more detail in upcoming videos so here we have done that now I'm just quickly going and to log in on this uh, user account and we'll see just opening our private window and going to open a user logon for okay so https colon slash slash and my server name dot slash oa this would be the default directory for my exchange oa it's automatically created will take a couple of minutes in the meantime I am just going on another machine so I can log in from a different user you can see I have created the user account here in active directory also so ex 2 x available here let me quickly open my exchange OA okay so my exchange OA is uh, open here SPL slash EX user1 make sure here I am logging with user1 and now in the different machine I am going to log in with user2 still then not secure but still I would continue because I don't have a security certificate installed I will let you know how we can install a security certificate in upcoming video so this error will be rectified security warnings and all okay here I'm going to log in with my second user account see for the internal local emails you need not to create any connector etc it's always working okay so I'm just selecting a time zone here and same thing I have to do it in a different machine also because I have taken two machines one is the user one and another one is ex user two so here is the OI is getting logged on let me show you the email just send a test email to view it my exchange is working fine or not yet still loading on both machines may require just a couple of more minutes 
only okay so now it's ready over and this is my user 2 okay let me quickly have a look it's in user 2 okay I'm sending the a test email from ex user 1 2 you can press Ctrl K to search if the ex user 1 exists or not yet it's trying to search it out still okay so it searched and sending test from user 2 I just send an email it's still in draft so may take a little bit time to go away Here is my ex1. Okay, perfect. So ex1 at spl.com is here, and ex2 at spl.com is here. Uh, at server. Okay, now oh, that's mail is moved from draft. So we can have a look on my mailbox. Okay, the mail is came here. I'm just sending a reply on this so we can take a look how it's going okay it's coming from two to one as i mentioned earlier no message test from user two so i'm reverting it to user test from user ex user one two two and sending it back so we can have a look on my server here it's came back or let's just refresh it okay it will take a couple of minutes and in the meantime I will do one more thing I am just creating one more email and sending it to sales all group so let me quickly check sales distribution group is available okay sales all this is my distribution group send to dl i just clicked on send both mails are went away okay so you can see send to dl is received because ex user 1 and ex user 2 both are the member of this group sales all same thing if we can check you can check it here uh, it's test email from 122 which i just replied on user one's email it's a thread one you can check it out here and this is the send to deal which i just sent it from user one so this is what about simple email testing and so we have seen that we have deployed the exchange environment and we have successfully sent an emails as i mentioned it's not required to build uh, connectors if you are sending it mail internally or locally within exchange environment but yes if you are sending an email to internet or external units it's always mandatory you have to add the internet connectors mail relays and everything accordingly you have to configure the dns records so i will discuss all these in upcoming my exchange videos where you will get more details about these connectors and exchange server environment so till that time thank you so much guys and do like and subscribe my channel and share it with your friends thank you so much